try it now. Good morning, church. Let me move the microphone back down here in front of my face. That will help a lot, a lot. So how is, there, is everybody doing good today? We, we've tried, I've tried rearranging the front of the sanctuary just a little bit to try something a little bit different um, so that I can, needless to say, get out from, I don't always stay in the pulpit, and I won't today either. And um, in fact, I'm going to get out of the pulpit real quick because I realize that my uh, monitors down here are talking back to me as to what's on television. There they go. Now they're silent. So I want to welcome all of you here this morning, this beautiful, beautiful, sunny Sunday morning. It may be a little bit cold out, but the good news is it is warm in here. Today we continue looking at Love Never Ends worship series. We've been looking in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 over the last two weeks, looking at what it means to talk about the gifts of the Spirit, unity of the body, coming together with those gifts so that we can bring about God's church in this place at this time, that we can learn from the church in Corinth their mistakes, their use of the gifts, and we continue that today as we explore still into this idea of unity as we go into the 13th chapter, the chapter of love, love that never ends. So this morning, as we gather, whether that be in person or whether that be online, we find a time to humble ourselves before God, prepare our hearts, open our minds, and allow God's Spirit to wash over us this morning. So with that, let us join together in singing our opening song. It's number 2071 in the little black book. It's called Jesus' Name Above All Names, and we're going to sing it two times. in our call, our responsive call to worship. We worship a loving God. We are to be kind and our actions thoughtful. Do not be envious, boastful, or proud. Love is the greatest gift and the most excellent way to live. Worship a living God. 
and we choose love. Let us take this time to join together in praise as we look at the songs this morning that the praise band will be bringing to us. Well, you'll have to, I, yeah, we can't, I can't reverse them at this point in time. So yeah, okay. we'll, so everybody change, change your pages to Because He Lives. No, no, you're, you're starting with because he lives. Amen, amen, and sorry about the, the switching of those two, but we're, we're getting this one step at a time because we love the Lord. Ooh, see there? So, 
And so Courtney, just focus on the band with the camera. <laughs> As we come to our prayer time, I would ask that it, uh, if you have any joys or concerns, I uh, started to think that and I said that if you have one or joy or concern, if those of you that are online would like to, you can put it in the chat section or you can text it to me. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary, if you have a, a joy or concern, um, let me have you raise your hand when we get to that point and we will... Uh, pass those on to you. So today, as we come into our time of prayer, there's a, one that probably escaped some of us that uh, because it was in the Muscatine paper more than it was in our own Wilton paper, but uh, Linda Ford, a member of our church, uh, who's been caring for her mother for the last couple of years. Her mom passed away this last week, and uh, her mother was a member of Wesley United Methodist Church down in Muscatine. And so we want to keep Linda and her sister in our prayers that they've uh, uh, been taking care of their mom for a long time, and uh, uh, she's now gone on to uh, be with the Lord. Of course, we want to continue to keep the family of Kathy Luthie in our prayers. We had the service this last week, and we want to continue to keep uh, Lisa and, and Laura uh, in our prayers. I did get a prayer request from Kim Pestel. She's beginning uh, new therapy, uh, immuno, immunotherapy treatments for her cancer, so keep her in your prayers as uh, that moves forward. Uh, we want to continue to keep our prayers for those that are dealing with COVID-19. Uh, Jill Utter is the one that uh, has asked for prayers for herself, and, uh, and she continues with that battle, but is getting much better. Sarah Anderson has asked for prayers for her father-in-law, Mike. She did report that things are going better, and um, hopefully it will continue to go better, but he still has a few more chemo treatments yet, and then they'll see how that goes. The same goes for Joy has asked for prayers for her Uncle Larry, and he has finished up a will, has. So now they're waiting to see, works a little bit longer and see if it'll shrink a little bit more and then the other options after that of surgery. So keep, continue to keep uh, Larry in your prayers. And then we got the good news that uh, Darren Clark has returned home um, temporarily. He's home while they wait for an opening to happen in treatment uh, for his rehabilitation. But the good news is he's home. So that makes it easier for the rest of the family uh, as they deal with and care for him and, and keep his spirits up. But uh, I would ask that you pray that they get the treatment center that they want at the distance that they want so that it will continue to work and be um, progressively better for Darren. Uh, so keep that family in your prayers. We want to continue the, the prayers that we've been lifting up of 
Carol Walton's co-worker's family, the son, Lane, Connie Zoni's asked for prayers for her daughter's her daughter-in-law's dad, Dallas, as he continues with chemo. Uh, we want to continue to keep uh, Martha McAllister's family in our prayers, uh, Steve Craig and uh, Ed McAllister and uh, Rosemary McAllister as they deal with all the things between uh, Steve and the car accident and Ed and Rosemary and their health issues. So keep them in your prayers. Uh, we want to continue to keep um, Carolyn Tharp and uh, Catherine Brown and Diane Budding and Marsha Hessler and Ann's brother John in our prayers. I do know that I got an update from Penny McKillop and Penny's online that Dale is now home from his uh, bypass surgery uh, and is doing well. He's sore, but he is home and uh, it is good uh, for them to be there. Is there any other joys or concerns um, that we want to lift up? I know that uh, last week I lift up uh, Emily, or not Emily, Hannah, um, Emily's daughter, Rogers, who won state champion. Of course, that was in the paper. But last night, or yesterday afternoon, uh, Skyler, or Schmidt, who just joined the church, won his conference championship at 160 pounds. So uh, the wrestlers are, are really shining well. I know that there's been people who have asked for prayers for the nurses and CNAs that are still dealing with all of the aftermath of now two plus years of, of intense hospitalizations and treatments and uh, the not ongoing issues, as well as the teachers that are dealing with um, students coming and going and, and staffing shortages of substitutes and all of those kind of things. So keep all of them um, in your prayers. Um, I see that we have, uh, oh, we have Bill and Jane Block uh, are joining us for worship in uh, Arizona. So welcome. It's nice to have you uh, joining us this way. Are there any joys or concerns that we need to lift up uh, for our family? Not hearing any and not seeing any here on our devices. Let us take this time to join our voices together in our unity. Loving people. We pray together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I'll lead us into a time of pastoral prayer, silent prayer, and then to the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Lord, this morning, I just ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. That those of us gathered here, person to person, and those of us that gathered screen to screen, that you may manifest yourselves in their hearts, their lives, their souls. That you may allow them to feel your presence as you activate their gifts of the Spirit. Lord, this morning I just ask that you continue to watch over us, to heal us, correct us, and guide us. Lord, you've heard the numerous requests for prayer and the concerns upon this family as we deal with the loss of loved ones, as we mourn those who are no longer with us but are with you, as we worry about those that are dealing with issues of the health, those that are going through treatments, those that are going through hard times mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. So Lord, pour out your spirit. Help us to be your guides, to be your beacons of hope and light. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are hurting this morning, the least and the lost, those that have inadequate housing and inadequate income, those that are dealing with issues of the body, who aren't feeling well, to be with those who are dealing with issues of the mind, that are dealing with depression and anxiety, those that are hurting in this world. Lord, we ask that you be with those that are dealing with issues of addiction and abuse, that we may find ways to help, to reach out, to lift up. Lord, we ask that you wrap your arms of protection around those who serve. Protect them from the illness of our time, but also from those who wish to do harm. Lord, we ask that you work inside the hearts of those who hate to allow them to understand that love is the greater gift. Lord, this morning, my prayer is that your spirit flows over us, 
triggering and activating the gifts that you placed within us so that we may lift you up to praise you and to prepare your kingdom. Lord, this morning there are many things around this earth that cause us to to wonder, to be concerned, whether that be blizzards in the east, political division and the possibilities and rumors of war, those who choose to hate and destroy, to threaten. Lord, work in their lives to prepare them to be better, to seek you out. Lord, we ask that you continue to wake us all up so that we may be instruments of your love. So, Lord, we come to you now in a time of silence to prepare ourselves, to listen to your voice, to feel your spirit. So, Lord, come, sit with us now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for preparing us. Thank you for awakening us. Thank you for loving us in a way that only you truly understand. Lord, sometimes we are so overwhelmed by this world, by our families, by our jobs, Sometimes we forget to turn to you. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done. The miracles that have happened that we've proclaimed and the miracles that we've yet to discover, to give credit to. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your death on the cross, your resurrection from the grave. And we praise you with that prayer that you taught your disciples so long ago. Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The good news, the good news, those who have prayed that prayer, those who have opened up their hearts, those who are looking for God's love, it's there for you. It never ends. It is there so that you can multiply it and share it and spread it to wherever God is sending you today, tomorrow, this next week, this next year. So let us take this time to now lift up in voice to, to prepare our hearts to reflect on our prayers as we sing the song, The Gift of Love, number 408 in your hymnal.
this morning as we continue to look at what it means to be a disciple, what it means to experience God's love, what it means to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We continue to look at Paul's letter to the church in Corinth as, as he tries to explain to that church that it is about unity. It's about being one. It's about being like Jesus. To a church that, for one, never met Jesus, they would have experienced him through the gifts that Paul had talked about in chapter 12 of wisdom and knowledge, leadership, prophecy, tongues, discernment, translation of tongues. Paul had gone on and on about the fact that all of these were gifts of the Holy Spirit. These were gifts that they should cherish and that no one person is better than another. Last week we looked at the fact that like the parts of the body, the church needs to embrace all of itself to be ready for to embrace one another. So we continue today at the end of where we left off last week. And in 1231 it says, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Paul wants to let them know that all those gifts that they had just talked about were nothing. He told them to strive for those gifts. That was what would have been the first part of this verse. But now he tells, I will show you an even more excellent way a way that is way much better than all those gifts of the Spirit that you've been proclaiming and fighting over. So let us hear what Paul has to say about that. He says, if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith, so that as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away all of my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now I see in a mirror dimly. But then we will see face to face. But I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And with that, we will bring the little ones up front. They're, they're anxiously waiting on the other side of the doors. I can see them out there. Come on, you guys. All right, we got Lauren. I see Lake. Claire's coming, maybe. Maybe. Yep, there she goes. Okay. So how you guys doing? Good. You got your kitten ears on? Is that what those are? Cool. Hi, Claire. You're so excited, I know. Ah, yes. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there somebody that loves you guys? 
Is there more than one person that loves you? Is there more than one person in this room that loves you? So how many people do you think love you in this room? You know for sure mom and aunt love you, right, Courtney? And grandma and great-grandma love you. So that's three. And then we have uh, Aunt Courtney in the back. That's four. You suppose there's anybody else in this room that loves you? Who? Lake? You guys haven't got to the easy answers yet in, in children's messages in Sunday school. Jesus loves you, right? So that's number five. And one of the things that I say in church all the time is that God loves you, Jesus, and I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So who, who's another person that loves you? Yeah, I said that, but me too. Okay? And I want to tell you, I want you to look around. Look around this room real quickly. Uh, see all those people back there? And even those people that are probably online, and I'm saying the same thing for all you little ones that are online watching this, and I know there's some of you up there. All of these people love you too. Now, they may not love you the same way that mom or aunt or grandma or great-grandma do or that I do or that Jesus does, Everybody in this room loves you, loves you. Isn't that cool? Now, the good thing is, Jesus loves you the most. Now, that's really hard for you to understand because you assume it's mom or grandma or maybe even aunt that would love you the most. But it's really Jesus that loves you so much and he did all that Jesus did just because he loves you and loves those of you that are online, and loves all of those of you that are sitting here. Isn't that cool? All right, so with that, let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us, because we love you always, forever, and ever. Amen. Because this next week, I want you to remember, when you're feeling kind of lonely, or you're feeling kind of grumpy, not that you guys get grumpy very often. Yeah, Lauren, I know you never get grumpy. I want you to remember that Jesus loves you. Okay, first of all, then I want you to remember that your moms and dads and grandma and grandpas and your aunts and uncles, they all love you, and that I love you, and all these people love you, and that should make you smile a little bit, okay? All right, so you guys can grab a sucker and head on back. No, not the whole basket. See, there's still some good colors in there. I haven't eaten them all during the week. So as, as they prepare to find themselves a little snack, let us take this time to prepare our hearts with the song, There's a Song. It's number 2141. It's a, it's a new song, a relatively new song. So Joy's going to play through it all the way once, and she will... This has five verses. All five, because that's all I got from you. <laughs> got, got that, Mark? So when you get to verse one, just leave it. <laughs> Don't go to two, three, four, and five.
eventually. Looks like we're getting our microphones turned on. There it goes. So today, as we continue to look at what it means to love, the greatest of these, part of what I want to step back a little bit is when we look at chapter 12, the lessons that we learned last week about the fact that we as a church, as those who claim the name Christian, those who call out to God, who celebrate the fact that God has given us gifts, gifts of prophecy, thoughtfulness, wisdom, teaching, prophecy, prayer, tongues, discernment, interpretation, and the list goes on. We looked at the fact that those caused division and caused worry amongst the early church. It causes division and worry amongst our current churches. Paul wants us to know, as he got to the end of chapter 12, that the greatest of these is love. Paul went on during that long chapter 13. He explained quite a bit. Now, part of it I know that a lot of you have read chapter 13. You've probably heard chapter 13 numerous, numerous times. It is the number one selection for weddings. Imagine that. A chapter on love being the number one selection for weddings. One of the things I, I tell all the brides and grooms that I uh, talk with and counsel with beforehand, they can pick that because it is beautiful. I mean, you know, the whole idea of love is not envious, love is kind, and it goes on. But Paul wasn't talking about couples. Paul wasn't trying to set a standard for young married people as this is the kind of love you should have for each other when you get married. Paul was talking about the kind of love that God has. The top standard, the top of the pole vault that we all try to get to but always fall short of. So when they, when they say those words to each other, when they maybe go back and look at the fact that they, they, that was part of their wedding celebration and uh, they love those words, to remember that those are things to strive for. Those are the, the gifts that God has given us in love, as love, by love, to be where we go for what Wesley would call perfection. As we work our way toward our perfect heavenly body, towards our perfect heavenly presence with God, we will never get there and will always fall short. So he starts right off the bat by letting them know, and this would have been quite discerning after look, listening to those first, that first chapter of chapter 12, not the first chapter, but chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, when he was talking about the fact that these are all great gifts and they're all equal, and that you should realize that as you work together with these gifts, they bring together the church and you know you need to be in unity. But then he gets to 13 and he says, even if I have all the wisdom and knowledge, and you know, he goes on, he goes through the whole list of gifts. If I, even if I had all of them heaped up upon me, I have nothing if I don't have love. I want you to think about the world in which we live in. These are trying times. Some of the most trying times that we have seen in decades. I mean, literally, we are now sitting on the rumors of war. We're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with an a infrastructure and political structure and social structure that is coming apart at the seams. And Paul wants us to know that even if we are the smartest person, even if we are have the most prophetic insight into this world. One of the pundits on television that they bring in to talk about the future because of their expertise. Even if we understand and can speak all the languages of the earth to try to understand what's going on, even if we have all of that, 
none of it matters without love. And I think you could all agree with me that the thing that is missing that would cure and end almost everything in that I've mentioned is love. If all of a sudden there was an outbreak of what's called brotherly love or love of humanity in the Ukraine and Russia, if there was a huge outburst of that for one another so that they would lay their rifles down, they would shut off the automatic targeting systems, that would be an example of God's unceasing love. If those who gather and speak with words of hate and division were all of a sudden working to bring about unity and community, that would be seen as a miracle. If all those in this pandemic were to start to get to the point that they were going to treat each other with the full amount of love that they have for themselves, no matter which side of that debate you're on, things would be better. We would see God's evidence in our world of what love can do. And then Paul goes on to give those wonderful parts that have been a part of weddings for a long time about all the things that love is or isn't. You know, it isn't envious, it isn't boastful, it isn't prideful. And if you look at that list, truly, honestly, look at that list that comes out of chapter 13 of all the things that love is and that love isn't we would fail pretty miserably. If you're going to be honest with yourself. I know last night as I contemplated this and thought about this, I got thinking about the fact that, you know, love isn't boastful. Oh my goodness, I love boasting about you, my church. I shouldn't be doing that. I can be proud of you, but I shouldn't necessarily be boasting because it brings somebody else down. At the same time, one of the reasons why we boast is because We may be envious. So we want to make an even playing field. He goes on to say that love, you know, doesn't hurt. Love is kind. If we if we wrap up all of those, and I'm not going to try to do those from memory, I want, in fact, that'll be your your assignment for this next week. As you were looking at your own spiritual gifts and how you can use those to bring about unity in this church and this community, I want you to this week to look at the description of love in chapter 13 and all the things that love is and what love isn't. And I want you to take an inventory of what you have or the ones that you think you're a little better at and those that you think you're not quite as good at and see if you can lift all of them up. And it's going to be hard. I'm going to tell you it's going to be hard because we are human. We're not Jesus. I've often had interesting conversations with confirmation students, mainly, and high school students and college students, when we got to talking about, you know, the whole idea of what would Jesus do, you know, wearing the WWJD bracelet. And uh, I said, well, how would you know what Jesus would do if you don't know what Jesus did? Because unless you understand exactly what Jesus did in that era, in his time, by putting women in charge of a major part of his ministry, about going into lepers' camps, hanging out with people that had been deemed unhealthy, unclean, irresponsible, hanging out with tax collectors and heathens, going places that the church at that time looked down on, unless we were to truly embrace what Jesus did, we can never do what Jesus did or be or claim that we want to do what Jesus did, the whole WWJD. So I want you to think about that. I want you to contemplate what it would mean if all of a sudden you place someplace and loved unconditionally. You showed up at 
work, school, family gatherings, and said, let's not talk about politics. Let's not talk about social issues. Let's not talk about those. those. Let's talk about how we as a family, we as, a, uh, as a, an employer-employee relationship, how we as a community can act with unconditional love toward those around us. How can we embrace the least and the lost, truly embrace them, not just send a check to help pay for something, but truly embrace them. It would be hard. I'm going to tell you right now, for me as, as, a, as a person, as a human being, especially when, in, um, you know, I've preached a lot of times when Jesus had the young rich ruler and Jesus said, go and sell all that you have and follow me. Well, Paul picks that up, if you notice. He says, even if you gave away all that you had but didn't have love, it's useless. If we, as a church, can find ways to just pick up one spot, we can stop there and then look, pick up one more spot and keep moving until we bring about the way that we want to love. When I was, had the opportunity to go to uh, South Korea about uh, um, nine years, or 13 years ago, I think it was, one of the things that astounded me is that when they build their churches and they build their parsonages, and they build a lot of parsonages. I would, the church that we were working with had senior pastor and I think 15 associate pastors. Um, it was a church of, you know, 30,000, 40,000. It, it was huge. It, it literally had its own TV station at the back of the, the church. But one of the things that they do that is really kind of small and simple in a lot of ways, every parsonage has a front door, and then there's another door that anybody, anybody that is coming through the area that is cold, that is hurting, that is hungry, that has no place to stay, you are welcome to open that door. And inside there is a room with a bed and with food, toiletries, to clean yourself up, to get a night's sleep, to nurture yourself. And they don't regulate it. They're not like out filling out forms, you know, show me your check stub, you know, are you worthy of this? It's just open. The door is unlocked all the time. And when I asked one of them if it gets used, he said yes, on a regular basis, but not every night. There aren't people lining up to get free housing at the church parsonage, but it's there, and we know they know it's there, and we know it's there, and that we can offer that with complete love, unconditional, that they can come and be a part of our church, even if it's for one night. They can come and worship with us, even if it's one time. So this next week, like I said, go through that list. Look at chapter 13. Look at all those things that Paul says about love and figure out where you are on your own scale to begin with and how you can improve one notch at a time in your own mind, at your own standard. And then maybe in a week or two, think about where is that and what, where God wants me to be? Where is it where God wants us as a church to be? Where is it that God wants us as a community, a region, a nation, and a world? And obviously, a lot of those categories have a long ways to go. But they've got to start with us each individually, maybe within our own family. Like those young wedding couples that looked at that list and thought about how they are supposed to love at the minimum this new person in their life. And my challenge always to them is now once you, once you get good at loving that one person to supposed to moving towards perfection, find another person. And not necessarily a child, because ch children are easy to love, but maybe a neighbor, maybe a cousin, maybe a coworker, and continue to spread that love day by day, 
moving forward. And we as a church will come together in a new way. For in Acts, it talks about the fact that when the Christian church was first started, it grew, it grew not because of the preaching, it didn't grow because of the great praise band, it didn't grow because of the hymns, it didn't grow because of any of that. It says it grew because they, everyone was amazed at how they loved each other. So that is my hope and my dream for our church, that we show our love towards each other, towards our community, so that we can be, as I've been saying now for since about September, to be this experimental plot of heaven right here. This four acres can be a portion of God's kingdom right off the bat. So let us pray. Lord, this morning I ask that you continue to watch over us, to help us to love. Lord, I thank you for your presence in this place and at this time, and that you may continue to watch over us, to guide our steps, to open our hearts, to ease our souls into this life-changing experience of love. So Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us today, tomorrow, and into the weeks and months and years to come. Amen. So as we come to our time of offering, uh, you can put your offering. Those of you that are here can put it in the place in the back. Those of you that have joined us online, you can mail in an offering to continue to support the ministries of this church to Post Office Box 57, Wilson, Iowa, uh, 52778. Or you can go to our website, www.umcofwilton.com. Org, and there's a spot there you can click on and give through your financial institution um, to uh, continue the ministries. On the, the one online, you can make uh, different checks, checkpoints as to where you want it to go. If you're going to give it, send a check, please put in the memo, whether it's for uh, continued ministry or a special mission uh, objective. So as we come together, I want to let you know that things have been going well. We've talked about this. Uh, I'm hoping that next week, I can get it all planned out. We are going to, um, well, we don't get a mortgage anymore, but we have paid off our debt. So we will find a way of, of symbolically doing that ceremony next Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of February, as we start to look at what God has done for us, what God continues to do for us. We will celebrate that moment of the fact that our church at this moment is debt-free and that we continue to give in a mission mind that is so fabulous. It's one of those areas, I guess I now have to watch how much I boast about how you give and just report, I guess, on how, how good that you do. But I do want to let you know that we do have money. Those of you that are online or those of you that are here, for members of this church, I have um, a fund to help you get through a tough spot. So if you're having a tough time making ends meet, buying groceries or paying a bill, let me know and we can uh, find a way to help you out. So with all of that in mind, let us join together, join our voices together to dedicate the gifts that have come in, to dedicate the gifts that are yet to come in, and to dedicate this church's continued stewardship to this world. So let us pray. Oh God, may our gifts bring love to those who feel unloved and forgotten. Justice and mercy to be oppressed and burdened, and blessings to the body of Christ. In his holy name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of announcements, I will let you know that the announcements have grown, and uh, there will be an opportunity for anybody that has an announcement um, that if I don't cover, one of the things that we're going to try to do, if Mark, if you could have one of the handhelds ready just in case. I'm not sure we're going to need it. We'll see how well I get these covered. Sewing group. We'll resume a uh, meeting and tying of blankets. Um, I know that uh, Sandy was in yesterday and they cut and she's taken them home and sewn so that on Tuesday there will be plenty of blankets for those of you that want to tie knots in them um, and can continue that on. So that, uh, unless there's a funeral or some other activity that causes it to cancel, they meet every Tuesday from 9 to noon. Praise band rehearses every Wednesday night at 6.30. And uh, it's, a, it's an open group. They do really good. But, you know, if you've got a talent that you want to bring and share with them, uh, if some of you are hiding some singing talents or uh, other musical instrument talents, let us know because we can, we can expand and we can grow. Confirmation class continues to meet on Sundays at 9 and 7. So keep those young ones in your prayers. Uh, tech team. This is a team that is responsible at looking at our technology in our church. They will be meeting again uh, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. 
uh, with the Zoom option for those of you that cannot make it as they continue to, uh, to plan and to prepare for our presentation, as well as the aesthetics team will meet on Wednesday, February 2nd at 5.30 to continue to look at what their part of the presentation is going to be, which leads us to the next announcement. The tech team and aesthetics team will be making a presentation. Uh, they're going to start next Sunday, immediately following church for anybody that wants to uh, stay online and watch us or stay here. We will be presenting what it is, their recommendations for the needed remodeling of our church, what it means to go forward into the next era of this church. We've gone 50 years from the time when this sanctuary was dedicated and we started, and we really haven't done other than we've done some things in the sanctuary, but for the most part, we're at that point that we need to look at what can we do to move forward. So it's, uh, it's titled Becoming the Church of 2032. We're only really looking out 10 years of what it needs to be happening, and they're going to be making that presentation each Sunday, and it will be online throughout all that time. United Methodist Women, you need to know you're not meeting in February. So next Thursday, don't show up. Um, hopefully in March, everything will be a go. Uh, SPPRC will be meeting the next Monday, February 7th at 7 o'clock uh, to continue looking at staffing and uh, pastor parish relations um, issues. Following that, the mission team will meet on Tuesday the 8th at 5 p.m. in the adult Sunday school room. Uh, so if there's someone of you that might be interested in being on the mission team that haven't been, uh, this would be an opportunity for you to, to let me know and to uh, join us as we continue to look at what God's calling this church to do in mission this next years to come. And then, are there any other announcements? They're all sitting pretty still, Mark. Oh, Leroy, you need to go back to the microphones. Uh, in two weeks, uh, we were planning a breakfast, uh, excuse me, a soup luncheon. We're postponing that for now. We're going to have Methodist men with uh, pizza breakfast. Right. So yeah, and that, will, that will show up in the next week's announcement that the 13th of February will be the next United Methodist men. So. All right, with that, let us take this time to join together in our responsive benediction. Go and live as one body in Christ. Be at peace and care for one another. Show love in all your words and actions. May Christ give you faith, hope, and love. And let us prepare ourselves to go out into this world by singing the song, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling is number 384 in the hymnal, and we'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. <laughs> 